Welcome back to the FTN NFL team preview series. I'm your host, Mike Randall. Follow me on exit Randall Rant. We are sponsored, as always, by Boom Fantasy. Top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Innovative games cater to the casual, hardcore fans. You can win up to five at a time. Your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download that on the App Store or Google Play. Use that promo code FTN to get a no-sweat bonus up to $100. And we have one of my favorites back again today, Nick Farabaugh on X at Farabaugh FB. He's a Steelers beat reporter for Penn Live, host of the Steelers Breakdown. Does so many great things for Pittsburgh. We have him back here. We need an update. We're heading into the second week of the preseason, which means the NFL season is right around the corner. Nick, it's great to have you back. Not going to bury the lead. Brandon Ayuk, we've been talking about it in DMs. Is it dead? What do you think here? We need some sort of closure. It's dragged on forever. What do you got for me? Yeah, I think it's at a standstill right now. I think the Steelers are kind of waiting. I don't know, Mike. I, I think the wins are pointing back towards San Francisco. Mm -hmm. That's where I kind of am feeling it. Um, now, the Steelers, you've noticed they haven't really done anything else in terms of the all the expiring contracts they have, almost certainly because they're waiting to see what happens with Brandon Ayuk. It's been reported, and it's true, that the Steelers have a framework in place, and they already have talked to Brandon Ayuk and have a deal that would be signed immediately if he was traded. All of that's true, but the 49ers don't want to trade him. And so – it, we're we're going to wait. If this does happen, Mike, it's going to happen very, very close to the season. Okay. You know, leading up to that first week is probably when this deal goes down, if it happens. Um, but I, I do think that the more time goes by, the likelier it is that he heads back to San Francisco, in which case the Steelers are back to square one, which was they need to find another receiver and they will find another receiver, whether it's Brandon Ayuk or someone else. I believe they will add someone from outside this organization. It's just going to be, who is it? Yeah, and you mentioned that last time we talked that you felt strongly that there was another receiver that was going to be on the roster by week one. And I think regardless of what happens, we are headed in that direction. Let's look at quarterback here. Nick, I was at the Fantasy Football Expo in Canton, Ohio, so I can just give you the vibe from everyone that was there. You tell me if this is right or wrong. Justin Fields got his chance. Russell Wilson was sidelined. He did some great things. He struggled with the fumbles and then the holding the ball too much. So he pretty much cemented himself as not going to be the starting quarterback unless Russell Wilson struggles. Is that right or wrong? Tell me what you think here, second week of the preseason. I, I do think that's right. Um, maybe I don't know how much of it was necessarily – due to the preseason performance, I, I still think we have to see Russell Wilson against the Bills starting. Those four series will be uh, very important for us to truly lock this down. Mm -hmm. But I think Russell Wilson just hasn't done anything to lose the job, right? He wasn't. He was on the sideline for two weeks, which is what he did to lose the job. But then he came back, and to be quite honest with you, half the time, I don't think there's been a, a super – big difference between Fields and Russ. And I think Russ has been better uh, a lot of the time in mm -hmm. camp. Uh, so I, I like Justin Fields. I like his upside. I like what their their plan is with him, which is to get him as comfortable as possible and let him learn from Russ. But I just think Russ has been the accurate, precise guy. You kind of know what he is at this point in his career. You know, he's going to run into sacks, right? Like that's going to happen. But so that happens with Justin Fields too. They're very similar um, in their strengths and weaknesses. And I think Russell Wilson's leadership, his coordination of the offense, his veteran feel has rubbed off on the offense itself. So I, I do think we're really heading down that path where Russell Wilson will start week one. I fully expect that. Um, and, and at this point, you know, it's not that Justin Fields can't, when it's just so unlikely, I just don't see it. Looking at the running back position, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, I've heard great things about Harris. We've seen the videos. You posted some online of Warren doing a great job blocking in the drills and challenging everyone, which you know Mike Tomlin's going to like here. Running back room, still the same that we're thinking 50-50 between both of them. Maybe Harris having a bigger role than most give credit for because I thought he was disappointing, although he ended well last year. Running back situation, status quo, what do you have? Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty status quo. Najee Harris has had an awesome training camp, um, and he's done more than I ever thought he would. Remember, this is a running back on an expiring contract that just has fifth-year option declined. He's put his head down. He's worked. He looks great. Um, he's a little lighter than he was last year, so he's pretty quick. Uh, he fits this Arthur Smith scheme really well, Mike. Uh, you know, people will probably look at Najee Harris, and when he's big and, and doesn't get these explosive runs, you don't necessarily think outside zone, wide zone runner, but – then you see him cut downhill and have to face a DB in space, and he breaks tackles and gets 15, 20 yards on half his carries. That's what's been happening all of training camp, where he's just ripping off chunks. Uh, they're using him and Warren in the passing game a lot, which is, I think, where a lot of their upside is going to come from this year. 
And so I do think, you know, you're going to have 50-50 uh, split here. I don't know what Cordero Patterson is going to mean for this. You know, he's been getting some sprinklings in here and there, but it's almost always been with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren on the field. They're bringing okay. two running backs on the field at times. Uh, so Patterson probably will vulture a little bit of volume. Uh, so maybe it's more like, I don't know, you can slice Cordero Patterson having 5% out of the 50 50 that would have been perfect 100 there uh, for Najee and Warren. Um, but I think both of those guys, Warren and Najee, are going to be the focal points of this offense. It's going to be those two. And of course, Fryer Muth and Pickens in the passing game uh, as it stands right now. Obviously, if Ayuk comes, that changes the, the formula. But uh, in that backfield right now, yep, I think Najee and Warren are going to be in there. And Najee's had a phenomenal training camp. You know, it's interesting per our stats up here at FTN, Nick, Najee Harris last year, 10 plus uh, runs. So his explosive run rate was about 9.4%. Just as a comparison, that's right around DeAndre Swift. That was right around Isaiah Pacheco. So again, it's something where maybe the disconnect is not actually the way it is. If he slimmed down, he could be really an issue this year. Let's go to support that with the offensive line, which of course was the concern. Defenses legit always will be Blitzburg. But if that offensive line is better and they can protect a little bit more and get some more going in the run game, this team is a threat. The idea, Nick, that the Steelers have the longest odds to win the division, I think is ludicrous in my opinion. I know Bengals are going to be better, have an easy schedule. Ravens, of course, but the Steelers seem to always beat the Ravens. And the Browns questions at, at the quarterback position. But I think it's crazy. The key to me, the offensive line. How's it looking so far? Yeah, I... I... I will say I, I've been a little bit um, questioned by why they have done what they've done on the offensive line. And, and what I mean by this is I'm not sure what their plan is for Broderick Jones, a second year tackle. Um, you know, he's going to be their future left tackle, but he's been playing right tackle all of camp. And now he's, you know, he started to move over to left and now he's back to right because Troy Faltanu, their first round rookie tackle, has an MCL sprain. He's probably going to miss the rest of the preseason. And so if you are looking at this O line, Man, that hurts Faltano's chances of starting week one. It just does. Um, rookies that miss significant time like that, I think he was on the track to. I'm not so sure we're going to see that anymore, which I think inevitably makes them worse up front to start the year because I think obviously Faltano and Jones is a better duo than Moore and Jones. Um, and I just don't see any scenario where you see Moore and Faltano be the, the starters. Jones is going to start at one place or another. Um, and so I think that's a little bit of a concern, but I think their interior has been fantastic. I think that's where they're going to win a lot, Mike. We're going to see Zach Frazier, the center, start week one. He's looked awesome. He looked great against Houston. Uh, yesterday in the joint practices against Buffalo, this guy was going one-on-one -on -one handling Ed Oliver, and it was looking really good for him. This was similar to what Faltano was doing before he got hurt. He was going up against T.J. Watt and giving T.J. Watt trouble. And it, it looks like the O-line is going to be good at some point this year. It's just going to be when does Troy Faltano get into the lineup so they can shift Jones back to his natural left tackle spot. They can have their best two tackles on the field. I think that's going to be the more important step uh, for this offensive line. But I think their interior is going to be great. And I do think one thing we've seen, Mike, consistently is the run game, whether it's in practice whether it's in games whether it's in joint practices they have popped off significant explosive runs consistently Najee Harris and Jalen Warren have multiple explosive runs throughout all of training camp uh, and it comes every day when they get the pads on they clear lanes um, I, you know pass pros a little more of an adventure at times but the run game is going to be very explosive and because the run game is going to be explosive you're going to have those patented Arthur Smith play action deep shots that you're going to get to guys like George Pickens and others. Which Russell Wilson is great at. We saw it with Cortland Sutton last year. You know who's great? Nick Farabaugh. Follow him on X at Farabaugh FB. Steelers beat reporter for at Penn Live. Nick, great stuff as always. I'm in on the Steelers. I think this is going to be a real good year. Offensive line, Buffalo. We'll see how it looks this weekend, man. Thank you so much for a few minutes. Real excited for the season to start. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Mike. It was great as always. The NFL Team Preview Series is sponsored by Boom Fantasy your top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Boom Fantasy has the most innovative games that cater to both casual and hardcore fans. Win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download now on the App Store and Google Play. Use promo code FTN to get a no sweat bonus up to $100.